heaven be on an assignment for us this morning. Whoever may be responsible for miserable seasons. Lord Almighty, bring that season to an end. In the name of Jesus, every miserable family, Father, we say, Lord, grant them peace. Let the season of misery come to an end. Any miserable individual who has not found purpose, Father, let that misery come to an end with this season. In the name of Jesus, thank you, mighty God. Lord, I reduce that you may increase, that your revelation may speak. I will not speak out of idea. I speak from the realm of your spirit in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now we're looking at end of a season is end of misery. Going into part two of this introductory level. And then we're going to see how does the, that season of misery, that uncomfortable, that reproach season, how does it come to an end? We're going to do that later, but I'm still in the beginning of this message. Praise the name of the Lord. Today, we're going to look at end of seasons of stagnation. End of season of delays under this series movement. The prophet of Agai spoke in the book of Agai, chapter 2, verse 9. It says, The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace declares the Lord of hosts. He's talking about a change of season. He's talking about the move of God in within his house, the move of God in somebody's life who has suffered a season of stagnation, a season of delays, delays in the, in the things of life and godliness. Therefore, a change of season brings about a greater glory. So I'm saying that we are coming to the end of 2023. 2024 must be a greater glorious year in the name of Jesus. Because a life that is in stagnation, a life that is in delay or in denial of what the Lord wills for that life is, is, a, is a life of reproach. There is no glory. Again, let's look at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Joel chapter 2, you take it from verse 21. It's also a prophetic message. And it says, do not fear... O land, rejoice and be glad. For the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, beast of the field. For the pasture of the wilderness have turned green. For the tree has burned its fruit. The fig tree and the vine have yielded in full. He's talking about a change of season. Verse 23 says, So rejoice, O sons of Zion, and be glad in the Lord your God, for he has given you the early rain for your vindication. The early rain for your vindication, and he has poured down for you the rain, the early and latter rain, as before. Praise the name of the Lord. All this is telling us about a change of season for good. In Jeremiah 29, verse 10, 11, it said, My thought towards you is good, not calamity. My thought towards you is good, for that is the plan of God. So the thought of God towards us as his children is always good. The thought of God towards us in business, in career, in ministry is always good. 
But the enemy watched you for years in struggle, in season, and will not do a thing. Because as we're going to see in this section, that whatever plan of God that is meant for your life is bringing men to activate it. I'm going to prove it to you today. Amen? So when we talk about stagnation and delays in the things of life and godliness, it's not the will of God that a man should be stagnated or a woman should be stagnated or a woman should be delayed in the things of life. Delayed in marriage. Delayed in childbearing. It's never the will of God. It's never. It's a season that must pass away. So, enemy may watch your life for years in struggle. For season. Time of life. They may not do anything about it. And the season is going away. As people suffered in families. In the eyes of the family, people suffer. In the eyes of the people, individuals suffer. In the church, people suffer. In the church, the things of God also suffer. It's a season. Remember, in Luke chapter 13, a certain woman, Luke chapter 13, a certain woman was bent double for 18 good years. 18 good years. She goes to church every day or synagogue to hear the, the word of God. Yet they look at that condition and there was nothing they could do. Nobody suggested anything. But Jesus, in one day, Jesus saw the faith of this woman. That's my own word now. Jesus saw her faith. And he called her out and released healing upon that woman. Yet, those who have sat there for years, for 18 years, who could not do anything, the men who sat, who could not do anything in the synagogue, they began to grumble. But the word I want to point to you is what Jesus said. That shows that God doesn't want his children to live in oppression. Jesus said to those in the synagogue, who have known this woman for 18 years and said, and this woman a daughter of Abraham as she is, whom Satan has bound for 18 long years. Should she not have been released from this bond on the Sabbath day? Because she comes to the Sabbath on on, uh, to come to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So, you know, on the Sabbath day, no work will be done, nothing will be done. Amen. But in this age of Christ, it's not supposed to be. But it's still happening in our midst. It's still happening in our society. So, he said, should she not have been released from this bond? A bond is a yoke. A bond is, is a stronghold in the life of a man. Or in a woman's life. That's what a bond is. A bond is a season. It's something holding you for a season. It's a situation holding you for a season. It can be a sickness. It can be joblessness. Or businessless. It can be like that. It can be that as a man, you do not have a direction. You don't know where to start. It's a bond. It's a yoke. That's what a, that bond is. Anything that holds you that you cannot help yourself. You need heaven to help you. You need Jesus to help you. And if you believe this is your month of release from this such oppression, from generational diseases, it shall be. It shall be a month of release in the name of Jesus. So the delays in a man's life it's a miserable season of yoke which only the mighty God can unravel to give the man the liberty to pursue destiny. A man and a woman can suffer delays in the things of life 
without explanation. That's why it's a misery. Mystery and a misery. Or a miserable season of that man. They might call you different names, but I'm bringing the knowledge to you that it's just a season that will pass away. And you will step into a new season in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For a man, for example, instability, financial instability is an embarrassment. Financial instability. Or instability in career and business. Instability even in ministry, church work. A season of stagnation and delay is a reproach. There's no testimony about that. When you see a man that has gone through a kind of a delay in his life, where no help is coming to him, where no job, nothing can be written that this man has achieved, then people will say that this man is a failure. But I want to tell you, the man is not a failure. But the things he desired for life failed him. No man is a failure. But the things he desired for life failed him. No woman is a failure. But what she wishes for in life failed him. Or say failing her. She's not a failure. Hallelujah. The man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5 this man crawled himself to the pool every day, every time, every feast. Because they said that at a certain feast, some angels come to steer the water. And whoever first jumped into the water gets healed of whatever is wrong. Therefore, at that pool where people were in debt, who were jobless, people were sick, some were lame, all kinds of things was happening to them. But this man crawled himself to the Bethesda pool at the ship gate. And I want to show you something here. Why Jesus saw that man at that edge of the pool. It was a season. 38 years is a season. Of reproach in that man's life. A season of disgrace in that man's family. But we are saying today. The end of a season. End of a misery. Hallelujah. So this man crawled to the pool. At every time of this feast. To wait for the standing of the water. She saw the angel came. To stir the water up. But the Bible said. He could not get in. I'm going to show you something. He, but he needed men to help him step into the water and get healed for 38 years. For 38 years, he needed men to help him to get to step into the water and get healed. But no man gave him attention. What a shame. What a season of stagnation in one position. Hallelujah. If they cannot carry him, they can give him an idea. If they cannot carry him, they can give him wisdom. If they cannot carry him, they can give him a solution. But no man, no man could help this man. They did not give him attention. For 38 years, that, that's a, a long season. But I'm saying today that that season came to an end. And it's has come to an end what, for whatever season that you may be going through. Until the 38th year, according to the account, until the 38th year of his life that he encountered Jesus, and he stood up on his feet and his misery ended in that season. There's nothing Jesus cannot do. There's nothing impossible to God for to do. No matter how your long season has been, you've been in oblivion for seasons of your career, for seasons of your ministry. But 
when you give your attention to Christ, your season of reproach will come to an end. I want to illustrate a season of delays and stagnation with the story of this man in John chapter 5 verse 1. Because when there is stagnation in our lives, when the progress of our life is delayed, when our career life is delayed, uh, 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 you know, a, a time of you making impact is delayed. You know, glory is absent. Glory is ab- absence. John chapter 5. Hallelujah. And we saw in this man, is a, this man's story is a template of how men suffer in the eyes of man. And we are saying that we saw Jesus brought that season to an end for that man. And the man moved to the next level. And I'm saying today, I decree you're lifting up. In the name of Jesus, you shall be lifted up. Where men have left you to be stagnated. In the name of Jesus. I pray you will find the mercy of God. This man found the mercy of Jesus. Why she was behind the pool to crawl in and waiting for men to help him into the water. Hallelujah. Jesus said to this man, John chapter 5 verse 7, Do you want to get healed? Do you want to get healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps before, steps down before me. In other words, all through his life, he has been trying. But he has no one to back him up. He has tried in business, nobody could back him up. He has tried to educate himself, nobody could back him up. That's a life that is crawling and stagnated. It's a season that people go through. And I'm saying, as this year's strength is going to close, there are reproach in your life that must close with year 2023. Whatever is not glorifying the plan of God for your life must have to close in the name of Jesus. He said, while I am coming, another steps down before me. That means that he always loses chances. For 38 years, what, what, a, what a season of reproach. And I'm saying to someone, perhaps you have been waiting for men. And life is falling apart. No growth, no accomplishment for 10 years. Even for 5 years, no accomplishment. No one lifts you up. That's what we see in the society. No one lifts you up so that you don't be like them. But God is about to lift you up. God is about to lift you up. Lift up your business. God is about to lift up your ministry. God is about to lift up your family. In the name of Jesus. And he will do this by the men he has touched their hearts. Hallelujah. This sick man at the Bethesda pool found mercy with Jesus. Found mercy with Jesus. And he said to him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. Verse 8. The man stood up after 38 years for the first time. He stood up from his pallet and walked. He walked into a new season. He walked into a new season. He walked into a new glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember when my daughter started to walk. After almost two years, she didn't walk. The day she picked up the steps, instead of walking with her knee, the day she picked up on the steps, she was running all through the house. That's an excitement. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, look at this man who had been sick on the pallet for 38 years. And Jesus reached out to him. He found mercy. I don't know what is crawling around you. 
you will find mercy. I don't know what is being messed up in your marriage, in your family. You will find mercy. Whatever is being messed up in your business, in your workplace, you will find mercy when you give him the focus. Because this man forever has been focusing on men. He's been focusing on man. Jesus said, rise, take thy bed and walk. They've known him by that bed. The story is so long, but I'm concentrating on the fact on the day that this man stood up after 38 years to be somebody of note. This man rose up. He can speak to women. Because no woman will speak to a man who is crawling. <laughs> if you are broke, worse. If you don't have a job, worse. No, some can take you with that job, but with, <laughs> praise God. Stagnation is a disease. No mis miserable life, miserable business is a, it's a, it's a disease. And I pray you will step into a season, a new season in the name of Jesus. As this man stepped into a, season, a new season. You may be a woman who is crawling. No one gives you attention. There are situations like that. You will receive attention. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I will show you a secret why some women don't get attention. It's not that they are not beautiful. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, we are saying today, looking at the story of this man in John chapter 5, that this man for 38 years was always at the bank of the water, but could not step into the water. In other words, men pass him by. Men. Pass him by. That's the role of men. They, they pass him by. Never touched him. Several things like that. That men can pass by. A certain man was healed by Jesus. The man was blind. Jesus laid hands on him. And they said, what can you see? He said, I saw men walking. Like trees. I had to lay hands a second time. Then he saw properly. Hallelujah. He saw men walking, doing nothing. Having no purpose. Having no, no agenda. There are such men that surrounds you. That surrounds us. That surrounds your business. That surrounds you in the workplace. Even in our communities. There are men that will walk past those who are crawling. Like this man at the Bethesda pool. There are men that will walk past even the things of God. That needs attention of men. That's how serious. That men can walk past a man. 38 years. Wicked families. Men will walk past. They will not give you an idea. So that you don't be like them. They will not lift you up. That was the situation. That I can point out to you. In the book of John chapter 5. But it's a season. That if you are in Christ Jesus, that season shall be wiped away. And you will step into a new season. So I'm trying to say that the role of man is key to unlock destinies. The role of man is key to unlock destinies and to bring about exponential growth. That's the role of man. Because in the hand of man is money. In the hand of man is capacity. In the hand of man is a secret of success. In the hand of man. But they will not lift you up or come to your rising unless the spirit of God compels them to do it. Unless the spirit of God compels them to do it. And that means you have been very prayerful. Praise the name of the Lord. End of season. End of misery. I don't know what misery you have seen or the miserable season you are passing through. You will surely pass through. It will not pass into you. I said you will pass through it and come to a better season in the name of Jesus. So men will walk around this man. Despite the capacity, despite the secret of the marketplace, they will not come to your rising. No man could help that man into the water of Bethesda pool 
unless the Spirit of God compels them to do it. Because the psalmist says that the people shall be willing in the day of your power. The psalmist says that. That the people shall be willing in the day of thy power. The people shall be willing. So the Spirit of God is what moves the heart of man. God will not send you an assignment without men that he has touched your heart. Because in, in 1 Samuel First uh, Samuel chapter 16, the Bible showed us when Saul was appointed and anointed as king, people followed him. And the Bible said the man that he has touched their heart went with Saul. That's how God works. So men are key to unlock destinies. If you don't have men in the family with the heart of God, you will remain stagnated. Therefore, the delay of your progress, delay of growth is like wandering in the wilderness without a direction. That's what stagnation is. That's what the lack of growth is. You are, you are wandering in the wilderness without a direction and cycling the same issues round and around the same people and cycle with the same people without a concern. It's a mystery of a season. And it must be ended by warfare prayers for the intervention of God. Deuteronomy chapter 2, the Bible said, And the Lord spoke to Moses that you have encycled this mountain long enough, now turn towards north. That's what prayer, warfare prayer will do for you. Where you are stagnated, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. We give you a direction. In fact, we give you a quickening. We give you a quickening. So, the delay of your progress is stagnation. Of your growth is like wandering in the, in the wilderness. But I'm saying that there is the end of season when miseries also Come to an end in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will continue to speak to you in the name of Jesus. And I'm saying whatever season that you are, may you hear the voice of God in that season to make a necessary move. A necessary adjustment in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. End of season must be end of that misery in your life. That instability, when you are unable to make progress, I'm talking about real progress. When men walk around you and see you are not able to break the limitation around your purpose. So you walk as if you don't have a purpose. Men is lacking. When young men walk in a family, and no one is able to give them direction. Man is lacking. Hallelujah. It's a mystery. And it must be terminated. When growth is absent for years. In what you do. It's stagnation of the season. And like I said earlier. It's never the plan of God. For his children. To be miserable in any season or at any location. I said in the past that location is not the problem. Location is not a challenge to growth and development. It's the mindset. It's the mindset. So far it's the will of God for you to be in that location in that season, you shall surely prosper. No matter what it is. So, when we say that this misery or this miserable season must come to an end, we have to arrest that spirit of stagnation, that spirit of delays in our life and family. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you are even suffering failure, you are repeating metric two, three, four times. It's stagnation. 
that repetition of four times, your mate has already completed the university degree or college diploma. They've already completed. It's a spirit of stagnation. Because men will walk past you with your failure of metric. They will not give you a suggestion. They will not give you a suggestion. Hallelujah. Praise God. I thank God for suggestion I had some many, many years ago. I finished A-levels. And then I think there was one subject missing. And my uncle said, okay, come to the college where I am. A college of education. He said, come. Come. I've done A-levels. I was preparing for university to study law. He, he brought me. You can't sit at all. He brought me to his college. He was a, was a registrar at that time. Those are men. Those are men we're talking about. Men who can reason with time. The Bible says that the sons of Issachar, they are men in the tribes who knows what Israel is supposed to do in time and season. If you don't have them, you will live, you will stay long in your wilderness. You will stay long in a miserable life if you don't have men like men of Issachar who can reason with times and season and say, this is what you're supposed to do. If you don't have them around your business, around your ministry, you will be stagnated. Then the Holy Spirit must be speaking to you seriously. You must have focus on Christ. There are certain things you will need that will be downloaded upon you. So I'm saying that there is a season that is miserable in people's life. And we're using the closure of 2023 that that season must close with it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And therefore we arrest that spirit of delay in our lives and family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Barrenness is a delay. Toiling in business and ministry is a season of delay. It must come to an end. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, let me give you another illustration of why men are important for every destiny. In, first, in the first book of Chronicles chapter 12, I will use this illustration of the life of David, which informs us that the plan of God is not that you become a miserable person, a miserable career professional, or a miserable man of God. Or whatever your calling is, this chapter in Chronicles, that's why it's called the Chronicles, narrated how David was in seclusion from Israel. For the fear of King Saul, who was after his life. But God favored him that a whole city was given to him. A whole city was given to him by a man called Ashish of Philistines. And we saw that when he settled in this city that was given to him, it was like an incubation for his purpose so that his purpose is not destroyed. So that the, what, the kingship waiting for him is not destroyed. I want to tell someone that you need an incubation. And it takes men to provide the incubation for you. Even in business, we have what we call business incubation. Even your vision, we have what is called vision incubation. You need men to rise to it. And so, the story here is that we saw that the life of David in this city called Siglag was a time that his life was miserable. He was running from one stronghold to the other, from bush to the other. But this city was given to him so that he could settle down. He could settle down. I want to tell you that you may be living a miserable life as a man. What you need, you need a platform where you settle down. You need a business where you settle down. Hallelujah. And so the men who started with him, according to 1 Samuel chapter 22, they said they started with him in the cave of Adullam. 
They started with him in the cave of Adullam in 1 Samuel chapter 22. And they said these men were men who were in distress. They were in debt. These men, some of them were jobless. Some of the women too, they were miserable women. They, 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 they became, at the end of the day, they became transformed to men, to mighty men. They became transformed. They, make, they made impact in David's life when he was in that miserable season in Siglag. The grace of God was displayed upon him by men that stood by him. Hallelujah. And what is important, the Bible told us that these men grew, these men who were weak before they became mighty men. And on a daily basis, men were being added to David. So it's not about a location. It's about the mindset of men. They were added to him on a daily basis. Most importantly, they recognize him as a king over them. If you don't have men to lift you from where you have been stagnated, you can never have substantial progress in your life. Again, I give you testimony. I was roaming around the city of Namibia some many years ago as a young man trying to find something you're going to do, roaming around, no job. And a certain man came to me and said, I think you should go to Jobeg. That's the man. That's the man that you need. That was the man that I needed at that time. Otherwise, I would remain stagnated in that country. That's what I'm talking about, man. We can speak reasoning in your season. You need men. If you don't have them, you are stagnated. So this man said to me, he was a, he's a diplomat, now an ambassador. He said, just, just go to South Africa. Never had a plan to come here. I want to tell somebody, you know, you may hate men. You may hate men. But not all men are what you experienced. Mm. No, some women don't, they don't want men. Marriage, dating, they don't want. They are not even in menopause. But they just don't want. But I want to tell you that the glory that you are waiting for is with a man. Praise the name of the Lord. Give Jesus a clap of praise. We, we're talking about a, a season that 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 full of reproach that must come to an end. Hallelujah. Amen. So you may you may not like men for what you have experienced, but not all men are what you have experienced. I can count more more than five girls and boys will work with me. I can count at least five girls, at least four boys who worked with me in my business that today they are doing well for themselves. Doing well in their career. I taught them what steered up their purpose in life. Yeah. I taught them. What I taught them steered up their gift, their purpose in life. Some of them, they run their business and they are doing well. So, what I'm saying is this. God uses men to facilitate human destinies. They are helpers and they are full of empathy. They are full of empathy. Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 12. I want to finish around that before we go. 1 Chronicles, to substantiate what I'm telling you quickly, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, I'll take it from verse 22. This was a classic case that no matter what your location is and you are in the plan of God, the grace of God overflows. In fact, I'm just preaching a book I wrote in 2012, 2013, Overflowing Cup of Grace. I believe I used this very illustration. So you can get it on Amazon 
overflowing cup of grace. Now, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 22. For day by day, men came to David to help him until there was a great army like the army of God. Hallelujah. They began from Cape of Adullam when they were in distress. They became mighty men. And it takes mighty men to attract mighty men. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you don't have men with a heart for God, you are in trouble. But that season is coming to an end. Now, follow this story very well. Verse 23. Now, these are the numbers of the divisions equipped for war. Who came to David at Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord? Hallelujah. And I will jump. They discovered of the, and of the sons of Ephraim, there were 20,000 mighty men of valor, also of Manasseh, and of the sons of Issachar, men who understood the times with the knowledge of what Israel should do. And there were over 200 of their men. Hallelujah. And the Bible says of all other groups of the Asher and the Danites from the other side of the Jordan and there were 120,000 with all kinds of weapons of war for the battle. Hallelujah. Men are carrying substantive material that should deliver you out of stagnation. But if they do not bring it forward, you remain in stagnation. You remain in stagnation. Hallelujah. And I'm saying that here, we can see here that by the Spirit of God, men with a humble heart were drawn to David. And they recognized him as one saint, as a leader. That is how God works. God will not leave you when you carry his purpose. When you carry his purpose, you carry an assignment. You you, you have a career, a profession. You have the gift. Next week or next time, I'm going to talk about how God brings you out of the season of misery. I'm going to talk about that. But I'm just saying today that you need the right men around you. We need the right men in our families. Men that will stand. Men that we, when they say there is a casting down, men that will say there is a rising up. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And so Lord, we thank you today. We give you all the glory and honor. In the name of Jesus. I want you to rise up and we just take some prayer points. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord of Lord, King of Kings, Heavenly Father, pray tonight, pray this afternoon rather, that my God, my Father, my God, compel my helpers to rise towards me. In the name of Jesus, compel my helpers, compel my helpers. Men will not rise unless God touches their heart. Therefore, I'm saying today, some helpers may not rise unless God touches their heart. Therefore, God will compel them. In the day of his power, the people shall be willing. Therefore, let that be a declaration. Let that be a declaration. That men will rise. That Lord, your helpers will rise towards you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your help us. Let them rise towards me. Help us you have ordained from heaven. Let them rise towards me, towards my ministry, towards my business. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I call upon men who are ready to help, who are ready to lift up, to lift me up, to lift up, oh Lord God, the ministry work, to lift it up, oh my God, that we may step into the water of greatness, the water of of expansion, water of influence. Pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, compel, compel, compel. Help us. Compel men by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Even in your workplace. In your workplace, your promotion is due. Pray, Lord, compel them in the management to sign my promotion. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible. Lord, we compel them. Lord, we compel them. You will not be stagnant. In your workplace, you will not be stagnant. God, we compel them that they approve your promotion. They approve your job. Your promotion to the next level. God, we compel them in the day 
in the day of his power. They said, man shall be willing. Therefore, we are praying today. Lord, compel our helpers to rise towards us in the name of Jesus. Number two, pray. Oh, Lord, my God. There are men who are carrying your, your, your blessings. So we have to pray this prayer. Compare my blessings to be released from the hands of men. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray this morning, oh Lord, compare my blessing to be released from the hands of men. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Compare my blessings. To be released from the hand of man. Who are holding on to my blessings. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you mighty God. In Jesus name we pray. Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 to 7. There was an incident there. Joshua was a priest. And he stood in front of the Lord for his consecration. While he stood in front of the Lord for his consecration, the Bible said the angel of the Lord was standing, and then the Satan was standing. Hallelujah. And Zechariah could pick it up from the spirit realm that the cloth that is upon him is a filthy garment. And then they begin to rebuke the Satan. To rebuke the Satan. And he said that I said immediately, take off that filthy garment. Take up that filthy garment. I want to tell you today, the filthy garment is, is, is both spiritual and physical. But the filthy garment is the filthy mind of man. It's the filthy mind of man, even though it's spiritual. Because Joshua, the Bible described him, that is, is a stick of is a stick in the fire that has been brought out. It's a fire that has been brought out of the fire to do the Lord's work. Then the enemy rose and said, no, he does not deserve it. A filthy garment is a filthy hearth who has his own impression of you. Who has, who has you know, a suspicion of you. Yet, you are called of God as a man of God or as a woman of God. Hallelujah. This filthy garment is a spiritual. It's spiritual. It's all kinds of segment that people have put on you that has become a garment over your life and no one will come near you. And we are saying today that garment must catch fire. I said that garment must catch fire. Any filthy garment the enemy places on you in the spirit realm today, let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. That garment that is stopping your relationship, that filthy garment that is stopping your marriage, oh Father, let fire consume that filthy garment from that woman in the name of Jesus. Your marriage shall come. Your relationship shall come. In the name of Jesus, your promotion shall come. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare the consuming fire to burn that filthy garment that has been covering your glory for some time now that has put you in that season that where you are miserable that filthy garment must be removed in the name of Jesus I declare and I declare any filthy garment, any form of impression, any form of opinion that has become like a filthy garment over your life over your business today receive the destruction of fire. Receive the destruction of fire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. They receive a destructive fire. Every filthy garment that has become a shame over your life. As a man that you are not married. I'm saying that filthy garment. We burn it today. We burn it today. In the name of Jesus. A filthy garment is what is putting you in a cage where you are in stagnation. No business opportunity is coming to you. No career opportunity is coming to you. Today, I remove that filthy garment. I remove that filthy garment. I remove that filthy garment into the hellfire. Into the hellfire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Someone I speak over your husband. That that filthy garment upon him. That is not seeing himself. That nothing is come, nothing good is coming towards your husband. Today, we remove that filthy garment. We burn that field the garment. He shall begin to reason with the season. He shall begin to reason with the season. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
The Bible says in Isaiah 54, verse 17, says, Whatever weapon formed against you shall not prosper. So there are different kinds of weapons. This is what Zechariah opens our eyes to see. Because why should a filthy garment be on a priest's it can only be the work of the enemy. And when you go further into the filthy garment in the, in, the, in the Hebrew and the Greek interpretation, it means an excretion. It's really a death. No one will come near that. Hallelujah. We pray over this ministry. Any form of filthy garment. Resist fire in the name of Jesus. Resist fire in the name of Jesus. Any filthy garment over this ministry, by this community, by anyone, will say, receive this fire. Let that filthy garment receive fire. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I will not let them go. Those who cast a filthy garment upon your life, upon my life, upon the work of my business. Anyone who cast that filthy fire, let them receive fire. Let them receive fire. Let them receive fire. In the name of Jesus, right to your village, right to whatever where you come from. Because this filthy fire, the filthy garment is an arrow. No one will help him. Say all kinds of things. He will not move beyond where he is. That's stagnation. And I'm saying today, this message is prophetic. That the filthy garment has been removed today. You are stepping into 2024. A new season. A new season. A new season. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We give you all the honor. We thank you for the exposition. We thank you for the victory. We thank you, Almighty God. That there are victories waiting for you at a distance. I don't know who that is. There is a victory waiting for you in the distance. What do I mean? Let me explain myself. You are not there, sir, but you will hear good news. In the name of Jesus, when you go back, you will hear good news. A distant testimony is being organized for someone. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give Jesus a clap offering. We'll continue another time. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, Pastor Clovis. Give Jesus a clap offering as he comes. We we'll take the offering. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. And all the time. The Lord is good. Amen. Amen. I just want us to uh, pray for the God's servant this morning. For God has used him to bless us mightily this morning. Amen. You know, when the man of God was talking, I was just thinking that he was talking about having a mentor around you. Hallelujah. Having a mentor around you. End of season, end of misery. Hallelujah. So those things that you could not understand, those, you know, those, this is a season where now you begin to see that you require a mentor in your life, that your relationship with the Lord needs to be strengthened. Amen. That you, are, you need to be closer to God. As we were reading this morning, James chapter 4, he says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Hallelujah. So I want us to pray for the servant of God this morning and that the Lord will replenish him and the Lord will continue to strengthen him and will use him, amen, will continue to use him for his glory. Hallelujah. Let's begin to pray for the servant of God and thank God for the word. Just begin to pray this morning. Just begin to pray this afternoon. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your servant, O oh God. You have used, O oh Lord, to bless us even today. We we'll pray, Father, that you continue to strengthen him. Father, replenish every strength that has gone out of him. We we'll pray, my
mighty God that you continue to lift him up in the name of Jesus. You will lift him up beyond these borders, beyond the borders of South Africa, in Africa and the world as a whole in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, your blessings will continue to be revealed in his life in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the word that you have used him to release unto on us this morning. Mighty God, this word will bear food in our lives. It will not go on an empty ground in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Just some announcements that we have. Also on the 31st of, of December, we will have, you know, our crossover night. Hallelujah. You know, that will also start it will be right here in the church, um, in the church, and it will be from 9 p.m. So let's diarize it and let's make sure we are here. Hallelujah! On the 31st of December, Amen. Amen. And also, if you need prayer and counseling, uh, you can send an SMS uh, to our pastor on 082-456-9264, and you can also connect with him on Facebook as well as on Instagram at Abi Adeniba. Amen. Amen. And the church uh, Facebook page is Shekinah Fellowship Ministry. And our website is shekinahsa.co.za. Amen. And every last Sunday of the month, we take mission offering. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Is there anyone celebrating their birthday who want to pray with you? Amen. Any early December baby? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take our offering this morning. Offering time. Offering time. Tight time. Secret time. Amen. Let's look at the Bible. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 from verse uh, 19. Let's take it from there. Or we can take it. Let's take it from verse 18. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 18 to 19. I'll read for you. He say, I have received full payment and I have, I have more than enough. This was Apostle Paul talking to the people of Philippi. He says, I am, I'm, I am amply supplied that I have received from Epiraditus the gift you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. Verse 19, he says, And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Say to yourself, And my God will meet all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's rise on our feet as we give our offering and seed and tithe for the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And I want you to rejoice as you give your seed and offering and tithe. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let's rise on our feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I'm